Alright, welcome back to Evil's Comics. I'm Evil Mike, and I have a review for you today. This is Black Caravans, We Don't Kill Spiders, number one. It was just released re recently. I had the, the pleasure of, of, of reading it, and man, what a good read. If you can't tell already by, by all my jumpiness, um, this is dripping with story sauce, people. Story sauce, okay? Um, this is written and art by Joseph, and I know I'm going to say this wrong, but Shemekel, Joseph Shemekel, I, I hope, or Shem, Shemalk, maybe Shemalk, um, letters is DC Hawkins, edits is, uh, Sean French, and the cover is also done by Joseph, uh, Schmalk. I'm going to go with Schmalk, it sounds better, I hope, I, I, in no means do I mean any disrespect to the names. Um, if actually anything, I'm praising everybody that was attached to this book. Man, I really love Black Caravan. If you have been following me, I have loved every single Black Caravan I've been able to get my hands on. <clears throat> if you happen to find any Black Caravan out there and you are a fan of horror, you might want to look into it. Um, this book is following, uh, it is set in like, um, like it is set in like a North, n North uh, mythology type uh, setting, like a, in a North, North. Uh, now, uh, in all fairness, uh, I, I love mythologies, but in North, m North uh, mythologies has been one of the ones I've stayed away from just because it's a little more kind of vague and confusing and uh, like the whole Ragnarok story I, I love the story and everything and I love a lot of like Frenier and the dragon and, uh, another thing is the the specific language I mean just saying Norse or, or Norths or or how it's actually pronounced is it's very odd to me as well um, it's not to say anything wrong with that I mean no disrespect but it, it's just a little background you know uh, into evil Mike's uh, but it is set in that world. Um, it is about this, this, uh, she is a witch, uh, specifically a certain type of witch. And then we have uh, our, a dwarf. His name is Bjorn. And then we have, uh, and I'm going to wait on that because I don't want to uh, mispronounce her name. Um, because she's actually really, really cool. So we go into the story where we, uh, we're in this world and it's medieval times and everything. And uh, we are with this uh, North Landern family, and, and they're talking about you know Drakes and and why their family chose the symbol and uh, what it means to their symbol you know to their family, and um, you know it's basically a father and a daughter you know and he's whittling the yeah, a basic a, a, a dragon you know a shape into the wood. Um, they hear something outside. He, he goes to check it out, and uh, his daughter goes to get him his axe, and he's like, nah, you know, we don't have that problem around here, you know, I'm just going to go look. He goes outside, and he, he should have took the axe. I don't know if it would have helped, but he is quickly uh, beheaded. I mean, he goes outside and has like a second to say something, and, and whoops, he, he, you know, off with his head. Um, we reach uh, chapter one, and it is called The Last, the last Death Witch. De Death Witch. Not wish, witch. Um, the witch, witch, witch. Um, so basically at this point it is Bjorn and we are following Bjorn enter the city. He has been, um, he has been asked to come to this specific city in the north and um, he is met upon by basically their king which is this fellow over here and he basically tells this story about how there is um, disturbing events that are surrounding his his land now uh, kind of where where he stays and where his people you know close to you know his, his land and everything um, sorry um, everything seems okay but near the the farmlands and worklands that's where these incidents have happened and it's like four or five families that have been you know, uh, they've all been de decapitated. Not only that, but they've been set up in specific manner, like a, like a professional kind of did it. And um, then there's ruins and, and mad like like uh, all over the walls and that kind of thing. 
But the king goes into great detail in uh, telling Bjorn this story and also who he thinks is responsible for it, and that's where our witch comes into the story. Um, we get a little backstory about Bjorn, about how he is a faithless um, Viking, basically, and he is basically known as a berserker, but he claims that he is not, but he dresses as a berserker. Um, he's never referenced as a dwarf. He is just very short, and I, I'm just stating that he is a dwarf, but he is a Viking. Um, I, I'm not quite sure. I know dwarves are in that world, you know, but I, I, as far as I know it, they're considered different creatures type thing, and he doesn't seem like a different creature because... He, he does follow, he knows of the gods and stuff like that and everything that the king is telling him. Um, they go into the story where they talk about uh, the specific main character, the the witch. And if you give me a second, I will tell you her name. Her her name is Revna. Um, so they go into the backstory of Revna, and this is where the comic like I mean already the art was was. I wouldn't say it was amazing at this point, but it was really good. I, I enjoyed it, especially the cover. Okay, and so that that was just the beginning. It was like, okay, yeah, I'm digging the art, you know, the setup of the story, you know, and then we get to hear and it's this backstory of the the king telling Bjorn about the witch and why he thinks that she is specifically the murderer of all these families, and um, basically we see right here that that in at a moment in time. The king kind of made an accident, and, and, and their livestock had at on their on some of their farms had died, and he kind of blamed these witches that the Vikings used to kind of predict the future and and bless their raids and stuff like that. Um, in in his rage and and kind of the the people and everything, um, it led to the the basic you know the you know, the execution of the grandmother and the mother to Revna, the witch, the current main, co you know, the current main character. Um, and they were beheaded in front of her. Both, both her grandmother and her mother both cast, you know, different uh, curses on the king and the land um, that, you know, tenfold would come back, you know, to them and stuff like that. And the fact that they made Revna watch was devastating alone and he even tells this it's not, he doesn't tell Bjorn and Pride or anything like that you know he's, he's you know he kind of tells it in a sad way in a real way um, he also tells it that, that they did not kill the Revna the do, the, the granddaughter um, which because and it's made apparent by some of the other Vikings that that, that should happen and uh, the king doesn't allow it um, because, and I think the king is, is titled like a Jorn, um, like J-O-R-N, something like that. Um, don't quote me. Um, I'm sorry if I you know, mispronounce any of this. But um, So they don't kill her, but they basically banish her. And basically, like, they allow people to, you know, if they do run into her, they can talk to her, ask for her services, but they do it on their own will. She can't come back to the city. She's not allowed. Like, she's kind of basically an outcast. And they, they kind of sum it up in these two pages, her whole backstory and who she is and, and this and that and why she would have the, the idea of revenge plotted in her. And they kind of see it as like the, you know, the, the, the king kind of sees it as, as the, you know, the whole thing coming full circle type thing. Um, there is a whole bunch of conversation here about, you know, they go into detail about Bjorn and um, the king about how Bjorn is not really like, he doesn't follow the gods and how that works, where, where he came from, you know, specifically with his Vikings and, you know, and he, he just goes more into the, it's not about that, it's more into what you can prove and, and he kind of gets into this blunt thing where he's like, "Look, this is why you called me here. You know, it's you know, it's not it's not mythical or magical. You do believe there is a murderer. I'm just here to you know solve the crime type thing." So he asked to see some of the sites. They, it is like said that I think four of the houses they've already burned and salted because they were scared and afraid of curses and they did leave one because it was fresh. So he goes to investigate with a soldier. He is given like unlimited equipment and soldiers from the king to do this murder mystery you know detective work so he does take an assistant with him and they do 
like look at a bunch of the ruins and stuff like that. And then he asked the the you know the his helper to take him to the witch. And so they trek out into the woods. Now, the, for me, this is where the art, like, I mean, it was just stunning. I mean, there is a, a, a high level of pink, and, and there, there's just something about black and neon pink. I, I don't know, and uh, you'll kind of see in a second, and maybe you'll agree, you know. Uh, I am a grown man. Uh, uh, I do know what I like, and, and there's just something about black and hot pink. I don't know. Um, but, yeah, it, it sells me, man. And... Um, we go into this hole where Bjorn has snuck into her house. She comes home. Um, he is stealthy, and, but she is crafty, and she basically knows he's there, you know, kind of wants to know what's going on. The fact that he's not attacking outright says something. They introduce each other, and then basically, like, you know, he goes into question time, and he sets up the story. She kind of wants to see the ruins and stuff like that, and expresses that... The king is kind of dumb, that she is not the, the murderer, and he, he is smart enough to know that this is true. But yet, you know, stuff like this, like witches and, and stuff like that, and magic, and that doesn't speak the same epics, you know, that to Bjorn, that that would to anybody else. So he's more, like he, he's already stated, he's more into the proving, you know, that, that something. So um, as they are there, they do this thing where she's talking he draws some of the symbols on the ground and as he's doing it and they show it re real cleverly here there's a spider that lands on his uh, on his shoulder and uh, he quickly you know out of uh, it, not out of malice or anything like that or hatred or anything like that towards the spider he just does it out of instinct just you know and, and he kills the spider and uh, this this is where the like I'd say the the second meat of the story comes because you get the the reason for the title and and it does mean something and to me that was like I mean the cats McGee right there like how often does a cover uh, the title and everything like tie into uh, to me that's pretty cool um, but the explanation is is uh, that her the line of witches that she is cast from they are necromancers and um you know she she was aware of all different other kind of witch you know clans and cultures and they are that even that the vikings to this day even use another witch family to continue the prediction you know and the blessing side of it um the connection with the gods type thing so she expresses that in her clan they only had one one rule and it was that they did not kill spiders now for those who don't know what a necromancer which is is they they have the ability to bring back the dead um they, they can do quite a a whole bunch of different stuff but that's kind of the main gist they they basically take life to you know give life to dead um so like it could be where she takes health from a plant and gives it to the dead spider and when we we actually do see that here you know she in great detail she explains the the you know why they don't kill spiders like that they're allowed to use like everything else kind of thing they just they had this one ultimate rule that they didn't kill spiders and he does apologize and he kind of like is kind of amazed by it not only because the the backstory and everything but the i mean he saw something with his own eyes i mean she literally brings this spider back to life and he is i mean right there he already knew that she wasn't the murderer but also knows that he might need her and instantly she's kind of on board too there's something about this that speaks to her um and she kind of he asks and questions that and she goes into detail saying that you know that they have signs of a different type of magic that she's vaguely familiar with. <coughs> she wants to see the location that he found the markings at. They go there, she investigates, she kind of recreates it in her own type of mind stuff, you know, and she pieces together before he can even explain, you know. Um, they do go into this thing where, where she wants to re do this uh, magic spell where they need to bring a lot of living stuff so she can reenact this spell basically so she can talk to the dead spirits that are still there 
Um, she is a necromancer, and it's one of their talents that not only that they can bring the dead back to life, but they can also, you know, talk to the dead. So she asks the, the detective to bring them all kind of different stuff. She casts out what she needs to do to do the spell, and she starts doing the spell. She specifically tells all the Northmen that they are not allowed to come in no matter what they hear and stuff like that, that they are they, you know, not ready for type stuff. She does start getting into the spell, and um, we do see that something goes wrong. Instantly, she starts you know, questioning certain things, and instantly this guy teleports in. And he basically says, you have paid the red debt. The master accepts your offering of spilled blood and I will obey your call. What do you ask of Mokus? And that's where it leaves off. There is no hint at what's to come, but I mean, you can kind of, kind of, kind of see what might be coming. Um, I don't know, man. It was a really good read. Uh, I, I, I had no idea what this book was going to be about. And honestly, I am really looking forward to the second issue. Um, I am all on board a medieval horror story. Um, so yeah, um, I don't know. Did you read it? Um, you know, tell me what you thought. Um, tell me what you thought of this. How'd I do? Um, always stuff like that. I'm sorry I was a little parsed. I don't know why. Um, but like, comment, subscribe. I will. This will probably be the last review I shoot at you for a little bit, and I will probably be back later this afternoon. All right, guys, y'all have a good one. Everybody be safe. Stay healthy. Love who you got, what you got, and go buy some comics. Love that comic guy. All right, Eva, bye.